What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today we're taking a look at a very, very special, very unique, very rare Shir Gorov uh, 111 Thai Titanium uh, Bronze in Vinland Damasteel. So, um, pretty uncommon knife, pretty beastly big knife. Um, I'm filming this thing, I apologize, first thing in the morning uh, right now as uh, this knife is actually going on to uh, someone to take a look at. Um, but I figured I wanted to at least get some time with it, take a look at the knife, show you it, and uh, kind of go over it. And I'm looking at this camera, I may have to actually zoom out to get uh, more of this knife in frame. It's, it's that big. So uh, we're gonna go over this guy today, compare it with a bunch of other custom division knives, and uh, talk about it uh, before Kind of wrapping things up here. So just a reminder, this is a you know more of a coffee shop style conversation about knives. Uh, grab a cup of coffee or grab a beer, or a whiskey or whatever, and uh, let's get started. Uh, as well, please don't hesitate to visit my website, bladezilla.ca. There we go. Uh, that is bladezilla.ca, uh, where a lot of the knives featured on this channel um, are <laughs> available. So. I just had an RJ Martin, got a Custom Division Turtle, I know that's been in a few videos. Uh, some RJM Soft Overkills, some F95s, all kinds of stuff. Bladezilla.ca, check out the website, but that's not what we're here for. I'm sure if you've seen the channel before, you've heard of the website, so um, I will be quick on that front. So, where do we get started on this? This beast, this pocket sword of a knife. Um, well, let's get some measurements, let's get some weights, and uh, talk about it. So, I believe it was like ten and a quarter or something like that. No, not even, jeez. Uh, nine and three quarters, maybe nine and seven eighths, just under ten inches overall length on this, uh, on this hulk of a knife. Blade length is four and a half to the center of that choil, uh, but remember, uh, if we're looking at the centimeter side, 111 actually means 110 mil. Sorry, 111 mils, which uh, if I switch to the mil side, you can kind of see. That makes a lot more sense. Handle length, five and a half, something like that. Uh, but, although this is a big beast, the thinness of it makes it actually very easy to carry something this big. Okay, uh, It's got a claimed weight of 6.3 ounces. Uh, and let's throw it on the scale. I don't see it being anything, you know, uh, off of that weight, but I uh, may as well do it just to give you my scales weight as it seems to vary by knife. Um, and this is a 2019 knife, I think. 6.3, 6.4, it's kind of hovering somewhere around there. And for my Canadian gram guru, it's about 180, 181. So it's a heavier knife, uh, but it's also a bigger knife. So keep that in mind. Um, it is heavy. It is a four and something inch blade. So you know what? It's uh, it's going to have some heft to it. Okay. So where do we even get started on this guy? Well, let's start with the fact that it's monstrous. Full titanium frame. Runs on roller bearings. We've got a Vinland Damasteel blade which you can kind of see varies from the uh, the Stellar that I have in that that one is, uh, I think it's called Borkman's Twist. Let me go grab that right now. It's usually within reach of me here. There we go. So there's, that's the twist. And you've seen this guy uh, on the channel uh, a lot. And uh, I will sadly say this might be the last time you actually see this knife on the channel. I won't go into why, but uh, maybe the last time you see it. So two different Damasteel blades, Borkman's Twist and Vinland. And I'm going to try to get them close side by side with the camera, not freaking too much out, but you can see the differences between them. They are quite different. Um, you know, some of the sprint runs they used to do, or custom divisions, they used to kind of do like 15 and 15 or 25 and 25. Like on the sprint run of the Stellar, there's 15 of each. Whereas this, I think they're all Vinland. Could be wrong. Probably wrong. Mostly wrong. But it could also be right. But um, anyway, so 
the fact that it has a pretty cool blade edge to it looks awesome. I love the fact that on the Vinland stuff, like, you kind of get this rolled bottom edge that runs kind of horizontal down the entire length of the blade. I just think it looks so cool. And it looks... Um, I, I really don't have a preference between the two, but it just looks cool. It looks different, right? It looks more like it's, you know, could be used for cutting and not worrying too much about damaging it. Given that it's a long blade, it's obviously not a very tall blade. It's a little stabbier, so to speak. Um, it's not as thick of a blade, so it's, uh, I think this guy's three and a half mil. Could be four, but uh, I've been wrong. Probably three and a half. Um, probably three and a half. Uh, but, you know, the profile, very simple, very pokey. You know, not a whole lot going on. We do have, I believe, it's kind of hidden in here. Right up here, it should say Custom Division. It should have a little CD logo. And on the Dama, it's a lot harder to see. So I'm going to roll around. It's right above my finger. You can kind of see it in the shadow there. But uh, it does hide kind of in plain sight, which is a nice little touch because it's kind of... Uh, uh, I just think it's kind of cool. So it runs on roller bearings, super smooth, and uh, tried and true. This guy's from 2019. Uh, this guy's number 38, I believe. And what makes it look so cool, in my opinion, is it's kind of got a futuristic vibe to it. And it really reminds me of the Kami. Um, if you guys remember that, the Kami, uh, which is right here, it's kind of got some interesting profile comparatively. So it's kind of a flat top on this one. It's a flat top with some kind of indentations on the Sinkovich design, which looks phenomenal. But does that not look very similar to this? Like, is there not a huge amount of representation here? Am, am I crazy in that this is like a bigger version in some senses? Um, obviously, the first question people ask is, is this a flat top as well? And no, you can kind of see there is a lot of contouring to it, just like the standard 111s, in that the top is certainly raised, but uh, it's also still very curved and milled beautifully well. The pockets are taken out to kind of give it some futuristic design. It's got a nice dark kind of wash to it. Some milling up top here as well. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up, but if you're watching in 4K, I'm sure you can see some of this stuff. Lots of micro milling down here as well, kind of hidden into the uh, into the color. Looks great. And then the beauty that I love about this knife, that you have to love about this knife, is these copper uh, pivot kind of set up here. Um, sorry, the pivot collars, as well as that huge copper backspacer, which just jumps out at you in the clip. Like, this is just ridiculous. You know, it's it's got a, a dark goldish bronze color to it, but then you add this copper backspacer to it, and it's just like, get out of town. It's uh, It's got to be one of the brighter Shirogorovs, but it looks so good. And when you have all three in the frame like this, where you have the pivot collar, the clip, and the backspacer all just popping right out at you, it's just, oh, like, and the camera won't do this justice. I'll look back at this and watch this uh, after I film it, and it's like, okay, yeah, it looks kind of cool, looks kind of bright. I'm telling you, this is, like, very metallic-y. It looks phenomenal. You actually have to use copper polish on it, because it will oxidize, I believe. So, beautifully done knife. Um, same kind of pattern that falls on the back side, where you kind of get the little cutouts. You get the micro milling around the edges on the bevels, which looks super sick. The Vinland uh, dam obviously comes right up into the flipper tab, and it is kind of, uh, you know, we, I always talk about how the F95 and the Quantum have a very, like, different kind of setup on the tab. This one's kind of in between. Like, if you look, I'm going to grab an F95 here. So here's an F95, and how, you can see how the tab has, like, a little pocket here, right? And your finger finds it, whereas the Quantum, uh, it's a production Quantum, whatever. Whereas the Quantum, you can kind of see the flipper tab is kind of built into the frame, and you kind of get that, you know, one angle on it. So that's F95 Quantum. And through the line, they're all like this, right? So a tab that's pulled back or one that's built into the tip. The key thing to look at is the correlation to the center of the hardware. The more forward it is, the more you're going to hammer the thing out. And the more laid back it is from the center, 
it's going to kind of just, you know, take its time coming out. Think of it as a big, big cog on a, a bicycle. So on the Dr. Death, you can see how it's pulled back here behind the pivot, which means it's going to be a slower actuation. When it's forward, it's going to be a much firmer, you know, or in front of it, it's going to be a much firmer kind of snap out, right? So in theory, you'd think, well, on an F95, you know, or a nice medium sized knife, they kind of put it usually kind of mid center, right? Of that uh, flipper tab, which is pretty, pretty normal. On the 111, you'd think, and I just want to check this here, another F95, same kind of thing. Mid center, right? Um, on a 111, they kind of put it a little more forward because the blade is so long. You can kind of see it's more on the front side of it. So when you snap this out, it comes out pretty smooth and it's a heavier blade, it's a heavier swing. So just keep that in mind. Obviously you get that nice pivot collar, which looks phenomenal as well. And hopefully the light can bounce around and do it some justice, but if not, not a big deal. On that tab, obviously you can see the rolled in damascus steel all the way around at different angles. And you know, for me, when I'm looking at it, I have to take photos of for Instagram. This would be kind of what I'd be looking at right here is that flipper tab. And I just look at that and go, it looks like there's almost fingerprints on it, but it's the actual damascus steel. It just looks so good. You know, a nice macro shot of that. I can never figure out what this is actually for up front here on all of the 111s. Um, you know, at first I'm like, oh, maybe people can front flip this, but no, it's just kind of got a weird spot there, which is interesting. In hand, it fits. You would think this thing would be like huge and monstrous, but honestly, I've got extra large hands and you know, I've got finger, you know, extra room there, but it's very comfortable. The rolled clip is all rounded off. It's just comfortable. It doesn't feel huge in your hand, but it is a big knife. And I think they do that because it's such a, a thin, tall profile. So it kind of feels like a, I don't know, it's hard to explain. It just fits real nice. The jimping is very natural as well. You can reach it given that it's a large knife. You've got a nice flat top to the blade so you can kind of choke up on it if you need to. Very well done. The tab integrates, or the flipper tab integrates well into the handle's ergonomics. And then as you can kind of see here, you've kind of got a nice pocket for your fingers or one finger, maybe two, probably two, yep. And then a nice kind of rested back where you can kind of move around and get comfortable as needed for your, you know, if you want to wear gloves or whatever. It's just a nice fit. It's obviously uh, an inset kind of liner lock and you've got all this beautiful kind of worksmanship and craftsmanship on the actual tab itself. Uh, very much like the Stellar and I'm going to show you that Stellar one more time because I think it looks almost identical based on the fact that it's kind of got these Nice notches cut into it. So what is it, two lines or three? It's, I can't tell. But let's grab that Stella. Oh, well, this one's a little more refined, I'd say, but essentially the same thing, which is cool. So that one's a little, uh, I guess, coarse. More coarse is what I'd be kind of getting at here. This is kind of more in tune with, I'd say, the Stellaris. If you guys remember that, I've taken some pictures of it, and that's why I'm looking at this going, this looks familiar. We can see it's on roller bearings, which is the little symbol down here above my fingernail, which needs cut. Uh, don't look at them. But you can see that's the kind of marks, mark for the, the roller barrel, single row roller bearings. And usually they put it up top here, but this time around they didn't. Which is a nice touch. They're all individually labeled, usually on the inside back here. Uh, under here or up top here. Let's take a look at the light. Um, I think this was number 38 according to the certificate. Um, is it on the heel? Yeah. Hopefully you can see inside there just in front of the, the copper there but uh, yeah I know the lighting's not my I'm not a photographer by trade guys so don't judge me but uh, it should say inside there I think it says CD 1903, so year and model of the year, I think, and then 38, 
which is the individual number of 50, which is super cool. Um, the inside of it is obviously all milled out like crazy, skeletonized, to kind of add some weight savings on such a big knife. And hopefully you can see that. But uh, like this should be no surprise at this level. This is what Shirogorov does. This is where they've made their, their bread, so to speak. All that internal milling is just a work of art. Big, big trapezoidal shapes. Uh, it's just beautiful. And then when you look inside, the big pins come through for that backspacer. It's just gorgeous. Um, and then, you know, given that it's six ounces, like, let's be honest, if this was a, you know, an unmilled titanium knife of the same size, you'd probably be looking at like eight. And those roller bearings are nice and smooth. Beautiful knife. Perfectly centered as well, which is pretty common, obviously, for a custom division knife. Other than the Stellarises are uh, kind of notorious for that. But these ones are pretty standard. Beautiful. Uh, that tab as well for the lock is raised just ever so slightly as I roll the frame. You can be able to take a look at that. Uh, and then that's just an easier way to access it when it is raised up and it's just more comfortable. Versus some other knives, they just kind of make the two sides identical. I really like having it raised, personally. A little more leverage on it. The clip itself, beautifully done. You know, it's, uh, I believe it's a symmetrical clip. Because there's no need to angle one side or the other. And when I say that, I'm talking about, like, on the, uh, let's go grab the F95. <clears throat> if it is, uh, you know, when you have a lock bar like this, they, what I'm saying, it's not symmetrical. They angle one side of the clip onto the frame versus the lock bar. So you kind of see how they do that here. Maybe you can see it from the other side. But this rests on the actual lock bar instead of the, or sorry, the frame instead of the lock bar. But obviously, don't need to do that on this because, uh, you know what, it's a liner. So you got this nice, beautiful clip. It is in, uh, attached internally from the inside. This guy uses all uh, standard Shiro bits, so no reverse bits to take it apart. Um, you know, if I'm looking at this, I guess, uh, you know, I guess it is a bit of an eyesore having the screw heads. Whereas uh, on the other, some of the other models, they kind of hide that a little better, but it's okay. This is now, what, four years, almost five years old? Like, come on. You're, uh, you can't win them all. Highly, highly collectible as well. There's not many of these that float around. Table price on these right now, end of, uh, when I'm filming this, December 2023. Uh, right around 4,000-ish US, maybe slightly more. Depending on conditions, something like this mint would be on the higher end of that. Uh, size comparison, I'm going to walk you down here from the uh, F95, which we have. And then, then go down to the Stellar Sprint Run. And then to our Neon. These are all custom divisions, so... Um, there's kind of your size comparison, which is kind of cool. Or we could uh, swap um, any one of these, really. Let's take the Neon out and throw in a Mini. Mini Cube, given that it's a bit of a liner. So there you go. There you go. And remember, the whatever's closer to the, uh, to the bottom here is going to appear a little bit bigger. I can flip this around and make them look ginormous comparative comparatively so um the main thing here like you know people that are looking at 111s are probably looking at f95s and they probably love f95s they're probably very comfortable with them um you know between the two knives very very similar if you like an f95 it you'll you'll like a 111 they tend to be love it or hate it because they are bigger and they're more for the XL style hands, but I'll be honest with you. I've known people that have, you know, medium gloves and really like the 111s because they are big. They just, they're cool. They're very well balanced. They're a ginormous sword. And uh, they're just a, a cool piece. 
Now I do have another 111 here, a carbon variant. It's a little beat up, but I will show you guys if you want to take a look between the two. This one's on its way to a spa actually. But um, you can kind of see they do have a couple of variations of it, so carbon fiber versus tie. And you can kind of see the shape of the handle between the two. Whereas the deep space is a little more rolled. Right, a little rounded. And it's a newer knife, but for the most part, like you can kind of look through them and, uh, and go, well, yeah, it's the same kind of pattern. Um, the full tie one, I'd say, just looking at the scales, they appear a little thinner all the way around. Blade thickness is identical. Ergos, everything's the same. A little bit different pattern on the back spacers, as we can kind of see here. But overall, just uh, really cool, very similar knives. This one's quite a bit lighter as well, but still has a, a custom division feel to it in that it's got a nice heavy blade to swing out. But uh, it is going to the spa for some new hardware and a little servicing, so uh, you may not see the deep space for a little while. But uh, it is kind of cool to have two of them in-house. Maybe I'll throw the, the lock side or the uh, clip side down to show that as well. It is cool to have, when you have these two out to just kind of, you know, take a peek at them. And uh, I don't always have 111s in the house. Um, they, they are very uncommon for me to find. So there's kind of your, uh, your two. And apparently the light's freaking it out. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, beautiful knives. I'm just looking at them now like this uh, is a very nice little touch in that S110V. I love, I love that fullard. It just looks good. But uh, in terms of the blade, maybe I'll do a close-up on that as well, just to kind of see. Very, very similar. A little bit different of a tip on the deep space, as you can see. But uh, basically the same thing. A little bit different ergonomics. Uh, jimping's a little different as well. Let me just focus this here. There we go. So as we can see, just a couple different different profiles to the jimping which is not a bad thing they just look a little different a little different technology but like the big thing here is just look at the frame width right the frame width is the the tell right so you think okay it's full tie it's got to be beefy and heavy but honestly it's a thin knife and a lot of people love the deep space for feel because it's rounded but it's it's a fatter knife super cool but uh feel they feel uh, very similar given the circumstances so super cool knife um, so I've compared that now to what the F95 the Stellar the Neon and the Mini Quantum I don't think I'm gonna compare it to anything else um, we could do maybe a Molten or a, uh, a Denim there's your Denim comparison which uh, is, a, is a brand new knife which uh, just came out which is cool but uh, size wise it's a bigger special edition knife so people love that knife and uh, you know it's a, it's a nice one to show but these old school uh, I guess old school I, I like to think like pre 2020 these old school custom divisions are becoming so increasingly hard to find and uh, and there's a reason for it because they're cool they, they don't make them like they used to you know, just super solid like to me this is like a this is like a supercharged v8 type pickup truck where it's kind of got you know it's bigger it's heavier but it's it's got some some get up and go to it that's what's so cool about it what do you guys think love it hate it it's huge i know that's what she said but uh, i dig it i definitely dig it In hand, you know, like the jimping, I really dig. It's it's a little, uh, it's a little coarser than what I would think would come on like a standard five, Gen Five or Five One. It's a little a little coarser, a lot of grip. The clip is uh, the surprise to me is how well that fits in my palm. That's the real surprise that I was not expecting. 
And I love how these liner locks, you don't have to always hold over the clip like you do on kind of the frame locks. That's the beauty of these. So, um, reason being, if you're new uh, to this, you know, remember earlier I was talking about how the clip angles onto the frame versus the, uh, the, the lock, lock bar? Well, my workaround for that is you hold the clip so that when you're putting pressure on the knife, it's transferring the force to the frame. Right, whereas now it's it doesn't really matter, you know, it's it's just in there, right? You put as much pressure on it that you want, which would actually make this actually a really nice lefty knife, surprisingly. And as you kind of look around here, you can kind of see the patterns of the big cutouts. It's continued in spots that it really doesn't need to be, but it's so cool that it does. We do have a spot for a lanyard hole, which is kind of their old style, which is, uh, you know, rather than a kind of a countersunk in, it's just right on the tip, which is beautiful for this. It rounds it out nicely, kind of creates that whole profile, kind of rounds things out very nicely. The flipper tab, as I mentioned earlier, is kind of forward set, but if you look at kind of the hump of the knife in your pocket, you know, it's not really in the way at all which is awesome. So what do they call that? Is it a liner lock or do they call that, I think, a, a tab lock? I don't know what they call that. I think they might call it a tab lock. But nonetheless, it works very well. Now, the other thing too, guys, um, I said earlier, you know, it comes with Shergroff's kind of standard hardware stuff, or tools. Uh, I'm sure it doesn't come with it, but it utilizes this versus like the reverse bits found on some of their other knives. Um, let's grab a Molten. I know they have the reverse bits for these. Okay, so it's essentially a regular screw, just backwards. Um, it's reverse. So when it, uh, when it doesn't have that, it just makes it servicing it just a little easier. Um, yes, it is essentially a screwdriver, but it's uh, on these ones, it's a little fatter than a normal screwdriver. Uh, get the tool or use a penny, something softer than the material. On the other side here, um, same kind of thing, right? Bigger, you can use a penny, maybe a, uh, like a folded debit card or something. That would also work. And on these guys, your uh, your centering of the blade is pretty much dependent on this, right? So uh, as you tighten it, it kind of pulls it over. You loosen it, it goes obviously incredibly smooth, but you'll see it drop off. Um, the longer the blade, the harder it is to center as well. Keep that in mind. The tolerance is it's like a big leverage, like a curve, right? The longer that draws out, the more dead center everything has to be to make it work perfect. Which is cool. Uh, don't be surprised as well on uh, some of the Damasteel um, knives to not be as silky smooth as say you know M398 or whatever. And why that is is because when they roll and fold all these layers of metal, the detent ball. Uh, think of it as running across my fingers, right? Where it's going to be hitting all these different layers at a very micro level but it's going to create the feeling until that track wears in for the detent ball that it's going to feel dry, it's going to feel rough, it's going to feel kind of gritty. And then all of a sudden, after a few hundred flicks, all of a sudden it gets smoother and smoother and smoother and then, you know, it's no different. But when a, when a Dama blade feels new and it's not used, they tend to feel a little dry, a little rough, a little notchy almost on that detent ball. So just keep that in mind. Beautiful. Beautiful. And I love how they do the hardware here. Um, you know, in a perfect world, I'd love to see the, the hardware kind of color matched to kind of set it in. And, uh, you know, being so loud like this, you know, super loud, uh, backspacer and clip and pivot hardware and stuff, I would love to see this gold as well. That would be so cool. If, uh, you know, I'd love to see those screws gold. Just 
If you're going to do it, do it. Just my opinion. But I could see someone getting uh, like a hop-up kit and making it just super, super loud or even more loud than it needs to be because it would just be so sick. And I also love on the, the 111s, I love how long this backspacer goes. Like I love how this goes right up, closes off the gap, whereas most of them will kind of stop at the halfway point, maybe 60% of the, the channel length. I love that they just do the whole thing, why not? If we're going to do it, we're going to do it big. Big, loud, in your face. That's, uh, that's what this knife is. It's a complete sword, man. And uh, you know what? It, in your pocket, it really doesn't carry as crazy as you'd think. Like, uh, grab that. Uh, where did that go? Grab a, an F95. And you look at that, and uh, it's really not much bigger. You know, like if you're if you're truly looking at things, like you're you're carrying okay another half inch or so, but you're getting another half inch of blade. Like it's just ridiculous how cool this knife is. And yes, it's big. Yes, it's it's beefy. It's loud. I'll tell you what, you pull that blade out and people uh, people will not want to be around you. <laughs> oh, unless they're knife nuts like me, like Shiro Horror. I'd be like, what's that blade? Is that Finland, Danny, Dana Steel? Can I hold it? Can I flick it? I'm just kidding, I'm not like that at all. Much. But, um, yeah, people see a, a knife like this and uh, it would definitely not be allowed in some states in the U.S. just based on the size. I think, what is it, like three inch or three and a half inch you're not allowed in certain states? Uh, you know, four and a half? That's a big knife. But totally carryable, totally, you know, in line with all the technology that they've been doing. You know, great detent, good launch, good ergos, durable, easy to work on. It ticks all the boxes. I love all the rounding, the beveling, the micro milling. It's just a fantastic knife. I think it's one of the cooler old school throwbacks um, in the Shiro lineup. And it's been one, you know, the bronze tie has just been so hard to find. And uh, there's a reason for that. They're just, no one wants to let go. So when one pops up, got to jump on it. You'll probably not get a chance to get it back. So there is the 111 uh, Thai bronze, or bronze Thai, copper 111, I don't know what you call them, custom division 111 bronze Thai, Finland, Dama, roller bearing. Anyway, super cool knife. It's a sick knife. I love it. I love the pattern. And I'm looking at it, it kind of gives me like futuristic vibes. It's kind of like uh, my buddy uh, Zach calls this. Um, antique future or futuristic antique right the antique being the bronze kind of look to it but futuristic in the profile and it's now multiple years old and uh, it still looks like it's from the future it's so cool love this knife and uh, you guys should too I think or not if you don't like it it's all good you do you and uh, I'll do, uh, I'll do, keep showing you guys cool knives. That's what I do. <laughs> so there you go. All right. Well, I showed you the knife. I gave you, gave you the weight, the measurements. And we talked about it. Fit in hand, the, the tab lock, the cool copper bits and pieces of it, which are just super sick. Um, I just think it's awesome, man. So I will uh, leave you on that front. And, uh, you know, check out the website, bladezilla.ca. Follow me on Instagram, send me a message, let's chat. Uh, more than anything, just talk knives. And if there's something that uh, grooves with you on the site, then great, let's chat about that too. Alright guys, have yourselves a good week. Appreciate you stopping by, checking out all the cool uh, bits and pieces. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Peace.